Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to uh, the podcast design plan. Uh, here, we're going to talk about the five principles of designing and creating a successful podcast. And we we'll cover a lot of, a lot of, a lot of topics that have to do with everything before the microphone. That is the, the key of this presentation is to understand all the work that takes place before you actually get started. And I think by to the end of this, and we'll go through a couple of this in my slides, we'll go to the end of this, you should have a very good understanding of what it is, what kind of thinking and thought problems you need to solve before you start a podcast that will make your podcast 10x of anybody else's just who are winging it and a lot of podcasters they say there's 2,000 podcasts starting every single week and a lot of them fail there's a there's some statistics out from i believe anchor where there are half of the podcasts on anchor have one episode and that's it and no one's ever listened to them because they did an episode and they were like eh, and then they fell away right so they had no planning no, no fourth sight into, into podcasting has difficulties. And though there's the rare occasion someone can break out from that, but most shows require a really level of due diligence in order to get working. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and, and jump into this and uh, get this ball rolling. And I'll do that by, let me share my screen with you. Okay. Okay. And if you have any questions, uh, uh, answer, uh, go ahead and do them in the chat. Uh, this is interactive. So do them, we'll do them as, uh, as they come at me. And with no further ado, let's get started. Okay. Well, welcome to the podcast design plan, five principles for designing, and creating a successful podcast. And today of course is veterans day. I am a U.S. veteran for the U.S. Navy. And my co-founder, Tim Bryan, is a veteran of the U.S. Air Force. So just wanted to say today, Veterans Day, thank a veteran. I know there are some people that say that uh, they get kind of, veterans get weird when you thank them. And I went back and forth and people come up and say, thank you for your service. I get a little weird because, you know, I, I, there are a lot of other guys who, who definitely deserve this a lot more than I do. Was they, there was a line saying is, I'm not a hero, but I serve with some. However, I've come around to take, you know, it, people want to show appreciation, people want to show gratitude, and I just need to be okay with that. And so I've, I've come a long ways. So I say I've rechanged, I've changed my position now that I, you should, if you, you find a veteran, say thank you. In fact, uh, not just say thank you for their service, but ask them where they served, ask them what they did. Yeah, be curious about kind of what their service was. This seems to be a better approach than just say thank you for your service and walking away. You know, take an interest. A lot of times, veterans really appreciate you taking a veteran interest. So happy Veterans Day to every, all the veterans out there. And by the way, you know, our company, GagglePod, uh, the two co-founders are veterans. So this is a veteran-owned company, which is kind of cool. Okay. The, uh, the rules for today is, of course, turn off all your distractions. You got a cell phone. Uh, you got the, uh, the TV on, those kind of things. Go ahead and turn all those off. And you want to really kind of focus on this. We're going to go really hard and fast for the next 60 minutes. And then it, uh, it should all kind of, kind of come together at that point. Uh, Q&A at any time, by all means, ask a question if you have it. And it's interactive questions. So if you have a question in the middle of something or, hey, Kyle, I don't understand what the heck you're talking about, then that's the time to, to ask it. So the, uh, see, I got to turn my distractions off too. Everyone's got to turn their distractions off. <laughs> got to make sure, even the rules, the rules apply even to me too. Okay. So let's, uh, let's right now, right off the bat, uh, I know this is a very, very frustrating thing about webinars is they want you to stay to the very end. Now I'm going to do both. I want you to stay at the very end because I have some extra stuff at the very end. But right now for, for Veterans Day 2019 is the, uh, is the code there. If you go to gagglepod.com slash Veterans Day 2019, I have a whole bunch of bonus material. And we're going to cover some of this in, this in this presentation. The first five of these are all worksheets that I've created that help you do your design the way that you should, the way you want it to be done. Let me speak into the microphone a little better here. And they're PDFs, so you can download them and uh, you can print them off and share them, copy them do whatever you share them with your friends. 
whatever it takes to get your podcast working and up and running and successful, that is what my, I hope for you out here. So this is, this is the, uh, the strategy of give, 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 and this is all give. Plus, I've added some extras in there. And as we go through this presentation, you'll, you'll notice what some of these extras are. And at the end, I'll go through what, what the, all the bonuses are. And everything's free. You know, I, I want people to be successful because if you create a podcast that's successful, you're going to go tell people that, hey, Kyle Bondo told you or Gagglepod told you or Tim Bryan told you uh, how to do that. And I want to do that, too. And that's really that's that's our value added to that. If I help you become a better podcaster, you're going to tell somebody. And that's how I get my that's how I get my ROI on this. So you, you download these now or wait. You know, we can just follow along. This presentation will be posted. So you can go back and look through it and go through kind of all the, the pieces again. So don't worry about that. If you have your phone, you can take a picture of this slide or you can pull your camera up to the, to the QR code and it'll automatically open it on your phone, which is kind of cool. So any way you want to do it, that's fine. So I just want to give that to you right now. It's gagglepod.com slash Veterans Day 2019. And those will be up till the end of the year. So until I, until I update them because uh, they're all part of another project. So I will be updating them regularly as, uh, as this idea matures. Okay. Now let's talk about what you're not going to learn today. First off, you're not going to learn content creation and scheduling. I'm not going to go deep into how you break down topics and themes and create uh, outlines with inside your, your podcast when it comes to actual content creation itself. That's a topic for a whole nother course. I will touch on a lot of this stuff and what you learn today should give you all the ammo you need to start doing this kind of thing. But we're not going to go deep into that. We're going to go into the fundamentals of it to give you the high level design piece of it. So you understand how these the podcast design works and how you can replicate that more than once. That's the idea. We want this to be a repeatable process. We're not going to go deep into formats and types of podcasts. I mean, if you're an audio drama person or a journalist or you want to do some, some weird avant-garde type podcast or the interview show, it doesn't matter. This is going to apply to all podcasts generically across the top. If you learn something here, you should be able to understand pretty much how to apply this in any kind of, any kind of vertical. And third, we're not going to go deep into identity and branding and show art. I am going to talk about a, my secret sauce to naming something. I'm going to go into a little bit of that, and I'm going to give you a, a really quick show art demonstration that will solve all your show art problems right away. It's going to be a, like a one-hit one hit pony kind of thing where you're going, to, you're going to see how this is done and go, oh, well, that makes perfect sense. And once you do that, you won't have to worry about the show art confusion or any kind of stuff ever again. And so, but we're not going to go deep into that because that's the graphic design side of the house. That's a, yet another class. They teach you color theory and composition and the things that requ are required for creating show art at the, the high resolutions you need for, for putting it into Apple uh, podcasts, things like that. We're not going to go deep into that, but I will give you enough to be dangerous. So what will you learn? Well, I want you to totally understand the design process as I explain it here. And you should be able to know the parts of the process as we go through. And I think uh, I have laid this out pretty well where you should be, have enough to create the podcast that you're looking to create. It should give you all the parts that you need. And that's a, a key learning objective. The second thing is key design problems is where do you need to start going, huh, I didn't think about that. Or, huh, maybe I need to think about that some more. That's the key design problem. That's the part that I want you to, uh, to also understand so that you know that you're doing something that, uh, that you're asking the right questions. And that's the key for that one. And the third is understanding design production tools. And when I say tools, I'm not talking software. I'm not talking a plugin for your WordPress site. I'm talking tools as I've created worksheets that have all the answers uh, on there. You just got to fill in the blanks. And that's part of the bonuses too, is, is you just got to fill in the blanks. If you can understand you need these things and why you need these things, the tool then becomes the way in which you can extract that from your brain. And that's, we're going to talk about that too. Okay. That too. Okay. So let's start at the very beginning. So there I was, I was at the microphone. I had all my stuff ready, had my coffee ready, had my, my show notes ready. I had uh, every there. I had the, what the, the, an idea of the podcast I was going to create. And I couldn't think of what I wanted to say. I completely blanked. And if you've ever been, this is the worst podcaster nightmare is to spend tons of time recording a podcast with no focus. And especially since you, 
you, you're discovering that you have no plan to work off of. You don't know what comes next. And when you finally hit, and this is the, this is debatable number, but a lot of people use lucky number 13. I think it fits and it's a perfect metaphor, even if it's not exactly true. I think the statistics say between seven and 11, but let's just go with number 13. Cause I like, uh, I like scary numbers like 13 and you hit number 13 of episode 13. You don't know what comes next because you didn't do any work beforehand. And that's the big problem with podcasters. What's even worse is never getting past episode one. Episode one definitely is a legitimate concern because if you can't get the thing launched, then you could really have a tough time ever getting to episode 13, let alone episode 100. So who am I? Well, I'm, I'm Kyle Imbondo. Uh, I'm the chief creative at GagglePod and the executive producer at GagglePod Studios. That's our audio drama side of the house. And I'm a co-founder with my best friend, Tim Bryan. And together we form GagglePod as a podcasting design uh, education studio and our podcasting company is what we call ourselves. And we co-host a show called Podrect. And Podrect is a show that's about surviving your podcast. These are the people who have done exactly what I just, just described and now don't know what to do next. They're stuck. They're like, I don't know. My show just fell apart. I don't want to do my show anymore. And that's where when we started the Virginia Podcasters Association, which is our meetup we were doing, we've been doing that for like three years. This is the number one thing we get from people is it's not that they have a podcast. It's that they have an idea for a podcast that they would really like to do. And it sounds cool, but they don't know what to do. They don't know how to get it off the ground. Or they have a podcast and it fell apart because they didn't know where to go next. And we're going to solve some of those problems today. Okay, so what have I put into the world? Well, I have, uh, I've done Merchants of Dirt, which is about uh, mountain bike racing. I found out uh, through being a blogger that uh, people don't read your blog with 65 million blogs out there. Podcasting is where it's at. And having a blog post helped me create content. Now, it didn't help me create a show. It helped me create content. I had to learn how to make that content fit into the show. But that was a, a podcast I created because no one else was talking about this subject. Race directors like to keep everything a secret, and I wanted to expose that. So the Vernations of Dirt became my, how do, you, how do you learn how to do this kind of thing? Get Lost Racing was, there are tons of really cool sports out there for like people of you know, 10 people or 20 people to do at a time. And no one ever talks about these sports. And they are competitive and they're fun. So that was that podcast. Then I learned that, excuse me, then I learned that, uh, hey, podcasting is hard and people fall away from podcasting. And all my friends who I'd met through podcasting, some of them had quit shows and someone had stopped podcasting. And I wanted to know, well, why? So I started a research project called Podfader. And Podfader is like an AA group for podcasters where you start to, you start to understand what it is that, that keep makes you pod fade? What are the, the elements that stop you from podcasting? And then how do you get back? This is where I learned that pod fading is a journey. This is where you just walk away from your podcast and never come back to it. And if you go on Apple iTunes or Apple Podcasts, all the time you'll see podcasts out there that have a new episode in five, 10 years, but they're still there. And that became the impetus, impetus for Podrect because that's what a Podrect is. Podrect is a show that you or somebody created in 2012 and then walked away from it they pod faded from it and they never came back but the show is still being published somewhere some host out there has the show the rss feed is still alive and it's living out there somewhere but it's sitting at the top of the chart hasn't had a new episode in five years or 10 years that's a pod wreck. so we started how do you navigate past that how do you start as a new podcast and get past all that 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 cruff out there the, the wrecks on the rocks how do you get through that and get to the safe harbor that's what Podrick kind of really kind of started as surviving your podcast. And then I've done a foray into uh, audio drama. Those are the two audio dramas at the bottom there, Ponds for Dramatic Effect and Three Minute Joe, which is one that's coming out in the spring. Uh, I've had some failures. Uh, Where, uh, Where Ops was a technical failure. I have a master's in IT from George Mason. And I started a podcast like I wanted to do uh, IT. And I found out that IT changes so much and it was so much of my day-to-day -day job that I was bored. I didn't want to do it anymore. I wanted to come home and do something fun, like audio dramas. So Wear Ops just kind of fell aside. So I, I pod faded that one. It's a, it's a pod faded one. So I've had some failures. And then I've had a recent success with Coming Home Well. Coming Home Well is a client of ours who does uh, veteran issues and talks about veteran issues. And we do the, uh, the production of, uh, of their show. 
So we kind of I've done a little bit of the variation of all these things. That's where I kind of where I'm coming from. Now, where are you coming from? And this is the key we want to start getting into in design. And I love this quote. This quote comes from a TV show called Halt and Catch Fire. And it's, it's not the thing that's important. It's the thing that gets you the thing that's important. So podcasting is a mechanism. It is a delivery vehicle. And that delivery vehicle is the thing that gets you to the thing. So you want the thing is you want, you want the, you want the, you know, the fame and fortune and everything. You need to understand how the vehicle gets you there before you can have the monetization, the ad space, the everyone loves you, the 10,000 downloads. You need to understand how that works before you can, before you can have all that, you have to have a show that has a functional you know, framework and foundation. And that's the key. So it's not the thing that's important. It's not the thing that, it's not the fame and fortune that's important. It's the thing that gets you the thing. And that's the, the a really fundamentally good design principle behind your podcast, okay? And what does that take? Well, we have five principles that we're gonna talk about today. And it starts with ideation, direction, adapt, adaptation, interaction, and definition. And I love the photo. This is my, my back deck. I hung a microphone here. To kind of give you an understanding that there are steps before the microphone. You have to do these things before you can actually turn a microphone. Before you even buy a microphone, you should do these steps first. This should be your goal, is to do these steps and get to your goal. You need to go through these five steps and then it will it'll manifest. And is the, the beauty of having a solid design is that when you turn the microphone on, you know exactly what it is you're going to be talking about for as long as you're going to talk about it. That's the goal. Okay, so everyone with me so far? Sounds good. Okay, so let's begin, right? Design process. Well, the design process, this is the podcast industry. And oh my gosh, this is this a terrifying uh, graphic because it starts with all these production pieces. There's a distribution side of this. There's a consumption. From the beginning of the idea all the way to where you have the, uh, the audience actually listening to your podcast, there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of stuff going on. And you could fundamentally say that design happens in a lot of these different places. Not only just the creation of the show, but all the way to quality and enjoyment of the podcast, to how you market it to get someone to listen to your show. Now, where are you? You are here. You are at the very beginning, the media creation process. Let's simplify this. So right now, I showed you that huge scary one, right? The big scary graphic, okay? The easy graphic is really simple. It's create, produce, publish, and grow. That's pretty simple. Everyone can understand that. Nothing really complicated to that. Well, there's a little bit more to that because you grow and eventually everything ends. Every podcast ends. Doesn't care how many episodes you have. Something will end eventually. And that phase, you're gonna change. You do something different. Like with grow, consistency helps your growth. Quality I and mean, production helps growth. And of course, creativity. Everything comes back to create. You're constantly creating things. If you're a media, you're your own media publishing company, if you think about it. You're constantly creating new content and you're constantly putting into this vehicle called podcasting to create this growth. So this is the really the podcast life cycle. So it's a simple process with many moving parts, right? The skills are really in the details of how this works. That's the first takeaway. It's a simple process. You can understand how you, know, you produce and people listen to it, right? But all the pieces in the middle. Well, let's really get into... Do we go from the idea? Well, what's, what's inside that little circle? What's inside that little tiny thing right there that, uh, that is inside the podcasting as a design? Well, this is the breakdown of just that tiny little circle. So now we have circles within circles within circles. You can really get very highly detailed that there's so many different things you have to understand for it to work. Now, this process, again, looks terrifying. But if you start to look at it really closely, you know, you have this idea, you have a direction, you have a presentation, you have a delivery script, and you go into a design detail and some of that, the stuff that goes in there. It really looks like this. Again, simplified. Is really all we're going to do is we're going to do the five principles. We're going to go through that. You're going to have an idea. You're going to give that idea a direction. Then you're going to do some adaptation to that direction to give it form. Then you're going to have some interaction to how that form will be presented. And then you're going to have a definition that you can use as your blueprint for creating a show. That's it. That is really the fundamentally the design life cycle. This scary thing turned into one line. Okay. All right. With me so far? Let me, let me check in here with everybody. Everyone. Okay. Good. I'm going to take a drink of coffee. Hold on. Ah, I turned podcast. I turned coffee into podcast. I should have that on a t shirt. Anyway, we're going to start with principle number one. This is the principle of ideation. And ideation really 
is fundamentally a, a, an act of creation with a touch of inspiration. I like that. It's a very, it's a very interesting thing like that is you have the ability to, to create things and be by things that you inspire you to, to create those things. And I like to boil it down into one line. What will your podcast be about? And this is a, a, a fundamentally, this is the question that you have to, to start every single podcasting conversation. What will your podcast be about? So there's our first tool. This is in the bonuses. This is called the podcast idea board. And it's really kind of broken down into three pieces. The first piece we're going to talk about is over here is kind of your uh, knowledge, knowledge base or your passion base or your energy base. Kind of where are you coming from? So that has really passions and stories, expertise, revelations, collaborations, discoveries. These are the kind of things we're going to break down to kind of figure out what is the thing that gets you up in the morning? What's the thing that people tell you, oh, I really wish you'd stop talking about that. And that really has to do with some questions you should ask yourself. What are you an expert in? What are you passionate about? What are you good at? What do you want to document? Maybe there's something that you, some, something that's about to be lost. And a guy Kawasaki used to say all the time that there's like three reasons to start a company is that to, to save the world, to make a change, or to, to preserve something that's about to be lost. And this is, this is kind of the fundamentally of, of the pieces you want to think about. What are you an expert in? Have you ever sat down and thought about the, all the things that you know? And chances are, you know a lot about a lot of things. You'd be surprised that how many people understand how to plant, how to mow, how to how the lawn care works, how to, to fix your house, just basic day-to-day -day stuff around your house that you understand. You may understand things like IT and the fundamentals of information technology. You may understand how the dry cleaning business works. You may understand how, how you start a business and why people can't start businesses. You may understand all sorts of things that you may are an expert in, but you're not so passionate about. It's like, oh, those things don't really get me up in the morning. So you have these kind of things that you about yourself because there's probably something you're really passionate about. Like me, I'm very passionate about mountain biking. I love mountain biking. I found out that I don't like talking about mountain biking so much, but I love riding mountain biking or riding mountain, riding mountain bikes. So there is a lot of different ways to cut this. The key thing for the first part of that column is just what are they? You know, what are your hobbies? What are things you want to learn? Maybe there's something you want to learn. I've always wanted to learn uh, how blockchain works. Kind of, uh, kind of very confusing. I haven't really looked at it very well. Everyone keeps saying it's the wave of the future. So things you want to learn. What excites you? I'm really excited about audio drama. I love the whole idea of telling a story with, with audio only. It's the uh, theater of the mind. I like that. So, but also what doesn't feel like work? Are the things that you do, maybe you go to a job every day and it's the greatest job you've ever had. And that's the kind of thing that you want to do. And I always like the last one here is, what do you want to learn about? What is the thing that, that you are curious about that maybe you don't know anything about but really would love to? Something really deep and meaningful to you. And that is really what you write down. You kind of do a brain dump, a brainstorm, I love, right? And you brainstorm all those things. You kind of all your passions and stories that you know or love, the expertise and some revelations maybe you had, you've discovered some stuff and the collaborations, discoveries. And then what you're going to do is you're going to write ideas about that. So what about those topics that you love the most? Write those down. What things come to mind? And I get a lot of this. Well, Kyle, I, I, you know, I love this topic, but I don't know where to go. I don't know. I don't know what about it I like. I just, I just like it. I like it all. Well, I say is, okay. Well, go observe some people. We call this the, the safari is you're going to go on a safari like a big game hunter and you're going to go observe your potential audience in the wild and we call the wild the internet. And two places I'd love to go more than any place else to observe my you know, listener in its natural habitat is Reddit and Amazon. And what about Reddit? Well, Reddit is anyone will post anything about anything. And that's a great place to start with content. Amazon has these play things called books. You might've heard of them. And with these books is a, to on a topic about anything. There's really a book about anything. And what I love about Amazon is the one star reviews. What about this book that they did not like? And then find out what are they complaining about, their pains or loves, the controversial topics. You're going to get into all that meaty stuff because when you start doing that about the thing that you're passionate about or you're expert in that you want to talk about, you're going to discover the things that you really want to do and find those pieces hiding inside there. 
These are just two examples. There are many more. All right, because you're going to find patterns when you start doing this. You need to do a lot of this. You know, find out what the people are understanding. They, they, they just don't understand how it works. They, they need help getting over a certain part. They need someone just to kind of like show them how it's all laid out because when they see it laid out, the movies are a visual learner. And they also, you're going to find out that, that people are, are curious and bored that they don't want to do certain things. How do I automate something? How do I make my life easier? You can find all this stuff by digging through where your, where your potential topic lives or your audience lives online. And then you're going to find out what do you want to say about it? What's your point of view? Everyone has a point of view. A perfect example, politics. You're a Republican. Are you a Democrat? Are you a conservative? Are you a, are you a liber liberal, liberal? Are you a libertarian? Do you sit in the middle? Do you don't want nothing to do with it? Everyone has an opinion about, about a lot of things. What's your opinion about the topic that you're interested in? And also, what are people not saying? And what do you want your audience to know? And how do you want to say it when you know that? You need to find out where you stand on this issue. And when you do that, we're going to do this simple little exercise. Is you can have all your stuff, you have your ideas about those, those topics and stuff. And you're going to go into and actually do some readings, pass, fail. Okay. So you think about P, M, and V. P, M, V. What does that stand for? Purpose, motivation, and value. And I like to look at me this way. I call this the Comic Con test. And in Comic Con, you have people show up in amazing outfits they built out of their own, you know, they've spent all their money out of their own pocket to build this outfit. And they've created this costume that goes to a conference they spent hundreds of dollars to come to to walk around in this outfit. What benefit does it do them? Good question. A lot of these people do it because they love it. They're not going to get anything out of it. They don't care if anyone likes it. And they just do it because they want to. This is kind of the pass-fail test for finding your topic is purpose. Could you spend your life teaching only 20 people this one thing? And if the answer is yes, then you, it's a one. Otherwise, it's a zero. Motivation. Would you, would you still do this if no one listened to you? If the answer is yes, then it's a one or it's a zero. And then value. Would you still do this if you knew you would never make a dime? And if the answer is yes, then that's a one. You go back to this list right here and you rank all your ideas, zero or one. And then you do some math and you find some things out about yourself you didn't know. And the idea here is that you're going to rate this stuff and find out what rises at the top and give yourself an opportunity to pick from the things that you are really kind of resonating for at the moment. That's kind of the key. And that's when you really kind of write down this statement. I want to create a podcast about what blank is a topic so I can talk to, so I can talk about the idea. So Let's, let's put this in context, right? I want to do a podcast about mountain biking so I can talk about mountain bikes. It's pretty simple, right? Maybe, maybe I want to narrow it down even more. Is I want to do a podcast about true crime who I can talk about mysteries. Ooh, that's kind of scary, right? That gives us our first takeaway is make your first podcast about something you're good at and passionate about. And this is a key thing, your first podcast. And I want to emphasize this the word passion gets overused a lot. A lot of people say passion, passion, passion. Oh, what are you passionate about? Passion to me equals energy. You can get energized about a lot of things and you can lose that energy. That's why passion fades. If the energy for the topic fades away, you lose that energy. You can re-energize yourself. A lot of times people re-energize themselves by going to conferences. They go to, they go to events, they read a book, they find new interesting things about that topic they didn't know before. They go watch a movie. That's all ways to re-energize yourself. So passion is fleeting. It can fade away. And you're going to have to work at getting the energy back. But it equals itself. If you have energy for a topic, you have passion for it. So just know those are interchangeable. Okay. And your first one, of course, something you're good at and passionate about makes life easy. And you want to make your life easy. And that's the goal. That's the goal, right? Okay. <clears throat> all right. Everyone, <coughs> excuse me. Everyone that is with me so far. Excellent. Okay, this principles of direction. We're going to go to principle number two, and this is the longest one. We're going, to, we're going to blaze through this, and this kind of really is summed up in the way in which you take a creative exercise in organization and composition. What direction will your podcast take is a question that's difficult to answer because it could go any direction, and this is the problem a lot of people have is they don't know where, what place to take the podcast. How is it going to be created? What is it going to be about? They know the topic. They don't know where to take it. People get stuck here a lot. So let's spend some time with that. Direction 
the where is your podcast going? This is where your podcast is going. You're giving yourself all the armor you need to move through the block. That's what direction is. Let's break that apart. So we're gonna do some math. I know creatives love math, but this is not really math, it's really kind of a concept is direction really is three things. It's purpose, it's a topic, it's perspective. We already kind of talked about topic. This is where, this is where you know you're gonna look for content. You're gonna filter out the content doesn't fit. You know, if I'm doing mountain biking, obviously I'm not gonna be talking about road bikes or no about mountain bikes, right? Mountain bikes are not road bikes. Mountain bikes can go right on the road, but they're not road bikes. So I can talk about things. I know what doesn't fit. I can filter out that stuff. And plus I get perspective, how I feel about those things or what my position is on those things. So I have those two together and wrapped around my purpose, the reason why I want to do this and why it's important to me. If I have those three things in conjunction, in synergy, sync together, I have direction. And we're gonna break that apart by using this. And this is the second thing, this is in your bonus as well. This is the podcast direction canvas. And it has a whole lot of things on it. We've already done topic. So we've already really done the big chunk there. We kind of work through what we think our topic is going to be. So now we're going to talk about purpose. And purpose is a very important part of this. And it's your why. And it really is your first podcast design priority. Because why are you doing this? Why do you want to podcast? Is it for fun? Is it for money? Experience? Are you trying to create a platform for your ideas that you want to you know, work out? Maybe you want to invite some people over and talk about some discussions, really meaningful discussions. Are you trying to reach new friends? Is this kind of the, the, what they call it the broadcast? What is your purpose? Because purpose is why and why is your purpose. Having a why is fundamentally important to a podcast. I like to say this to a lot of people and it's controversial, but it needs to be said. If you do not have a why, you should not start a podcast. Boom, period. Not having a why means you have not done a critical step in your planning. And having the why is fundamental to how you keep going, how you remember that energy part. If you don't have a why, you can't really have it. You don't really have a gas tank to put the energy in to create the passion to go forward. So why is critical and why before you start recording is far more important than why after you're recording. Because you can go back. If you have a why before you record, you can constantly look back to it and go, why am I doing this? What, why did I start doing this at episode 23? Why am I still? Oh, that's right. Because... There are people out there who are struggling with this topic and I want to help them. It can be simple as that. So there's a lot of different reasons why people want a podcast. And not, a lot of them are, are, are perfectly valid. Reach an audience, influence people, monetize their reach. They want to make some money. They want to teach a subject. There's something they know that no one else knows or few people know and they want to teach it to people. They want to be they want their legacy. They want to explore a topic. Maybe they want to learn as they go and tell people what they're learning. People love the journey. But the one thing that is not a reason to podcast is that just because, just because is not an answer. I want a podcast because I want a podcast. That is, that is a tautology. You don't want to, you don't want to, it's fundamentally flawed in that you're constantly, you know, looping back to why am I doing this? And if you don't have a reason, you're not, you're going to struggle. And, and the stats say that if you don't have a reason, you're going to pod fade. It's just it's inevitable. So this is crucial. If you want to find out what is your why, what is your why for wanting to start a podcast and know your why. And that's where we're going to, we're going to write that down in purpose. And the why comes with some connectors. It comes with what the connectors are called goals. And we're going to talk about goals in space next. And goals are really simple. is clear, definition of done, measurable, and time bound. You want your goals and you can start smart or smarter and all those kind of things. All those things apply. Have some goals is all I'm saying here. I don't care how you do your goals. As long as it meets these four criteria, have some goals for what it is your why is. How do you know you've achieved your why? And a good example of this is the Coming Home Well podcast, which is until everyone's home and well. That's their goal. Now, is that goal achievable? Yeah, they think it is until they can't do it anymore or they, or they die. They're going to achieve that goal. They're going to reach that. That's a goal for them. That's a high level epic goal. And how are they going to do that? Well, they're going to go to events. They're going to talk to vets. They're going to go to the VA. They have all these kind of different kind of goals they're going to do. And they know when they've achieved some of these goals. They're measurable, time bound. We're going to go to five events. These are the five events. How do you know you went to the events? You went to the events. How do you know you actually had any, any progress on that event? You defined these things as the definition of none. So you want to also, 
after you have some goals, because everyone knows what the goals are, as long as you put the timestamp on, you should be fine, is you want to know your space. Is who else is out there? Who else is talking about this topic? Now you want, you you definitely want to understand that uh, you have competitors out there. I mean, the, people think that uh, if if someone has created a podcast just like yours, that you're going to only get half the audience. Not true. There are people joining podcasting every single day. They're saying fifty percent of Americans have already have listened. Please listen to a podcast. Uh, many twenty percent of Americans. Uh, listen to at least six hours or six podcasts a, a a week. It's starting to grow and grow and grow. So the audience is indefinite. And there's 350,000, 350 million Americans. Plus, got to think about, you know, we have China and Europe and Africa and, and in Asia. The audience is massive, like 7 billion people out there. But in your podcasting world, who's adjacent to you? And are they any good? A lot of times you're going to find the good, the bad, and the ugly. And they're going to find out if anyone's even there. Is there even a lack of, of, of total competition? Does anyone care? Is there room for you there? Do you need a niche up and down? Maybe you can control an entire niche because no one's there. Know your space. Where will your podcast sit in the world? And I think the world as Apple Podcasts. And anytime I say the world, I'm saying go to Apple Podcasts. That's the first place you should go and look to see who's there. That's a space box. Now, over on the other side of topic, we have niche and sources. So niche is really simple. Niche is a category. Where does your show live? And this is difficult for some people to figure out what category they exist in. Well, remember we did topic. So you have a topic and you kind of have an idea to go here, but really you could kind of fit in a lot of places. With the Coming Home Well podcast, they're veteran affairs. Where does veteran affairs fit into this? Is it government? Yeah, kind of. Is it mental health? Yeah, it might be. Is it education? Could be. Kind of fit in a couple different places. That's difficult. So you could even get even more difficult is here's subcategories. You can really kind of break this all down. And Apple Podcasts has recently change their categories. So these categories are always in flux. So where you exist today may not be where you exist tomorrow. So just kind of understand that you could fit in a lot of different categories, but you're looking for one category. And here's the perfect example of business podcasts. This is the business category. There's the top 40 podcasts and every one of these shows is different. If you listen to any of these shows, they're always different the way they talk, the way they're, they approach their topic, their, with their point of view on their topic, what topics they actually cover. They're all business podcasts, but they all have a different flavor. And in fact, here's the cool thing about podcasting is I can listen to a whole bunch of shows and I'll have, still have time to listen to other shows because it's a, an appointment medium. It's not like we're on the radio and I'm going up against you at the 10 o'clock hour and you have to listen to me or listen to the other guy. It's not like that. I can listen to me and then I can listen to the other guy. That's the beauty of podcasting. So you can exist in a space that has a lot of people in it. And that's kind of the point. But when it comes to your actual category, you've already done your topic, you've kind of done your thinking, your brainstorming. The one word that best describes your, pod, your podcast idea is, and write that keyword down. And then just brainstorm where that fits. Where does that fit in what category? And pick that only one category. I know some places allow you to do three. Pick a category and be there because you can always change it. If you don't like that category, you want to move around categories, you can always change it. But just know what that category is. And this will help you later. Okay. Where do you go for sources? So sources is the other piece of that box. And sources, like we already talked about Reddit and Amazon, but you're kind of like, it'd be, if you want to get really get deep into that, you start to think about where does your potential listener read, go, they, what do they do? What do they buy? What do they love? What do they hate? You start thinking about that, about the pieces of the things that they understand. Where does your audience go for information? And then what do you think about, you know, what do you think about each one of these sources? And validate that. How long ago did they actually produce a blog post? When's the last time they actually had a thread of conversation? Facebook is a perfect example of this. There's a lot of Facebook groups out there that don't post anything. You want to go to a place that's alive. You're looking for a, a watering hole in your safari. You want to actually have water in it. You don't want to go to a watering hole to dry. Animals don't show up to that or your, your internet animals, if you would. And you also want to know what the positions are of these sources because everyone takes a side. Which side is your source on? Because I guarantee you that one newspaper or one source has got a different point of view than another. A perfect example, MSNBC, Fox News. They have com two completely different positions on the same topic. Well, know what those positions are. Because at some point, you're going to want to start a fight. You're going to want to actually be controversial about a certain topic. You can take a position on something that some people are not going to like. You can't help but take a position that no one will like, that some people don't like. Because you can only... You can only 
please 50% of the people 50% of the time. You're always going to take a position that there's going to be someone out there who doesn't appreciate that position. Like me telling you, don't, you don't have a why, don't podcast. Some people disagree with that. People say, oh, you should podcast first. Maybe we'll figure it out as you go. I disagree. I think you should figure it out as you go uh, before you go. So start a fight. That's how you do that. Now, what point of view will you take on your topic? You kind of talked about it a little bit before, but you're going to define, this is part of your defining your direction. What is your take on the topic? What is your angle? What is your special secret sauce of how you think about this topic is everyone's different. And that's the beauty of a podcast is your opinion matters because it's your voice or your potential vision of that voice. So what is your point of view? And then finally, we're going to go into a listener before we get to the bottom. And the listener is really key is this is your avatar. This is the person you're going to be talking to when you're talking in your microphone, in your closet, or in your studio, and you're looking at a picture of somebody, who is that somebody? What is their name? What do they want from you? And you think about what kind of person are they? What do they buy? Where do they go? What do they do for a living? I think always about uh, Bill or Bob. I like Bob. He's Bob's my, you know, I say Bob's my uncle. I think about Bob sitting in his car, frustrated. He's got to go to his really crappy job, and he really wants to do something different. And so he's trying to escape. And so my, my listener, Bob, tunes into my audio drama because he's looking for an escape, and I provide him that escape. That's who I'm talking to. Or we're doing pod rec. We're talking to the podcaster. Who's having, you're talking to, 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 uh, to Jane, and Jane is struggling because she got to episode 13, doesn't know what to do next. So in pod rec, we're talking to Jane that she has a podcast. She's worked on it. She kind of knows how to audio edit and she kind of knows some of the fundamental things. She's done everything, do, do, you know, do it yourself. And she's like, she's like, I don't know what to do next. That's who we're talking to. Who's the person you're talking to? That is the key to understanding this is who are you talking to that you think is your target listener? And chances are, it's not you. You're not talking to yourself. You may not be your target audience, but you know somebody who is. And that's the person you need to be talking to. And some people even write this down. They, they find a picture online and create a, a dossier. They put it up on the wall. They say, hey, I'm talking. Every time I turn on the microphone, I look at Bob. I'm looking right at him. Hey, I'm talking to you, Bob. Because of the intimacy of podcasting, you're talking directly to a person. So know who they are because this will guide your way forward as you craft your show because it's crafting your show to that person. I hope that makes sense. But this is the, the fundamental piece of this is figuring out who that one person is, not a group, not a demographic, not a psychographic, that one person you're podcasting to, and then fixate on making the design based on pleasing that person, figuring out what they want from you and what you want from them. You want them to be interested, right? It's not too long, only too boring. So you want to not be boring. So how do you not bore that person? That's the idea. And then you already, you already know a lot about them because you've already done a lot of this. You've done your, you're going your sources and you've done some of the research. You're starting to figure out who this person actually is. You know what their gaps in their knowledge are. You know what questions they ask, what problems they have, what struggles. But you're going to go deeper. You're going to go deeper to your unserved topics, things no one else is talking about. And you're going to go to underserved topics as well is things that people have glossed over. You're like, wait a minute, that's actually critically important. For me in podcasting, it's design. It's the actual pieces you build before they actually show. I think it's very underserved. Any book I've ever read has like two chapters or maybe not even that of, hey, come up with an idea and that's really cool. And now start. Here's your microphone. I think there's a whole lot more in there. And just like in the design process, you know, I demonstrated that I think there's a lot more in there. And then controversial topics. These are the things that a lot of podcasters avoid. They don't want to talk about these kind of things. Well, what are your controversial topics? And then how does your avatar, your listener react to controversial topics? Are you going to push that person away? Are you on their same side? Does that person agree with you or disagree with you? How do you feel about that? So figure that out and add that to your box as you build that in. So we've kind of filled out all these boxes and now we're down to direction. And direction is the most critical piece of this because going through the thought process of every one of these, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight boxes at the top, right? We go through all eight boxes and now we're going to go into direction. We're going to figure out, you know, boil it all down into one statement. One single statement. And what is that? Well, we're going to do an example. And here's the example. Here we go. All right. Oop. All right. What is my topic? So my topic is nonfiction true crime. That's what I'm going to do with you here. I really want to do a podcast on nonfiction true crime. In fact, I found a crime here in my backyard 
with the purpose. And my purpose was I found a crime that took place in 1998 in Georgetown, Virginia. It was the, the first mass shooting uh, in a Starbucks, triple homicide, it took place in 1998. And all sorts of weird stuff happened about the, uh, the, the crime itself. In fact, so much so, you found out that the manager of the Starbucks was actually best friends with Monica Lewinsky. And you're like, what? That's right. So it had a connection to politics. And because of that, all the people that I had engaged in building this one, we called it Dark Roast, that uh, it wanted nothing to do with the podcast. Because, you know, just you got this urban legend that uh, if you, you mess around with the Clintons, you know, bad things happen, right? But the fact that they were connected and this, this had all these irregularities in it made this fascinating. So the purpose of the podcast was to explore this case, okay? So what's my perspective? My perspective was to re-examine the case through, through new eyes. This is my point of view. I wanted to look at it through my eyes, not to, you know, I don't want to look at it through the Washington Post's eyes. I want to look through my eyes. What did I think about the evidence? What does Joe Blow, Kyle Bondo think about the evidence? And some of the other people, so I couple, a lady who was a PI who was interested in, in helping me out. What was, you know, what was her point of view on the evidence? What we think what happened? And then maybe ask some experts, okay? So what is that, if I boil all that down, all that thinking, my niche, my space, there was a space for it. There was, a, I had an ideal listener if someone was interested in that because you think about it, it's like, wow, you know, crime at a Starbucks, that's crazy. And you could boil it all down, all the pieces, it filled in all the boxes. I came up with this statement. And what does the statement say? It says, it's really simple. I am designing a podcast that re-examine an unsolved cold case that attempts to inform and explore the complexities of a difficult criminal investigation in hopes of shedding new light on evidence. Wow, that's a lot. But this is fundamentally the direction is, what am I trying to say here? I'm examining an unsolved cold, a cold case. Pretty simple. It's a difficult criminal investigation. That's my, my purpose. My why is kind of built in there. And I'm starting to shed new light on the evidence. That's it. That's my direction statement. This becomes, you know, for the sake of argument, this becomes your description. All you do is write down what it is that you're designing this podcast for. What's your purpose? What's your why? What's your topic? And build in the idea of what you want to share to the listener. This is what direction really is. And it's fundamentally different than the pitch because the direction statement is your internal why. Every time I, I think about if I was doing this podcast, I would go, why am I doing this? And I go back and go, oh, that's right. I am trying to shed new light on the evidence. This is my direction. This is my why. I know this is a difficult case. I'm going to get stuck. I'm going to get frustrated. I'm going to go back. This is the evidence that I want to look at again. Maybe there's evidence I haven't looked at yet. I've got a whole slew of it, right? Like the direction statement helps you redefine the why you're doing the podcast. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now, pitch. Pitch then becomes the other side of that coin because the pitch is really, someone's going to walk up to you and say, hey, what's your podcast about? Your podcast is what you tell other people. You're going to tell other podcasters. It becomes your tagline. Your tagline for your podcast, and really all it is is something simple. I podcast about blank for blank. Really simple. It's like a six-word sentence that you can tell people. They walk up and say, what do, you, what do you podcast about? It's like, oh, I podcast about true crime for people who love unsolved mysteries. Ooh, right? And people then, of course, they lean in, and they're like, ooh, tell me more. What crime are you talking about? This just works for anything. Anything you want to do. I podcast about art for people who want to understand how the inside of an artist's mind works. I podcast about racing because I want to under you know, for people who are building mountain bike races. It kind of works in all sorts of event, all sorts of verticals. And you start adding this thing, and this is just the pitch. This is the pitch that let's go back to here. Right, direction is this giant block that kind of talks about all the pieces we distill down into one sentence, and then the pitch is really simple. It's the it's the one sentence that you tell people when people ask you what your show, you don't want to tell me your direction, your direction statement, direction statements for you to fundamentally guide your show. The pitch is to what you tell the people. Okay. Direction drives your podcast design because everything is going to now be built upon that direction box because you're going to do all that thinking, come up with a direction statement, come up with a pitch. And those two bottom boxes are what is your foundation to everything moving forward. Without those two boxes, without doing that work at the top to understand what those two boxes need to say, the podcast has, is sitting on sand. And that is the really kind of the goal of direction. Okay. And I told you that was going to be a long one. So the rest of these are a little bit shorter. 
which is good because, you know, being a Virginian, I, I talk 10,000 words a second. So, and I'm coffee fueled, which is even better. So let's get into the, the principle of adaptation. And if you, you know, of course, if you have any questions, by all means, drop them into the chat and uh, we'll do a Q&A at the end and drop it in there. Otherwise, ask a question. I have an, a question panel open if you have any questions and we'll talk about that too. Anyway, let's get into principle three, the principle of adaptation, all right? So podcast design must be tailored towards solving a problem. So this has everything to do with structure. So you have the foundation. What are you going to build on the foundation? So we've gone through kind of the, we kind of, we found the plot. We found our topic and our purpose and all that. We built something on it. We have a direction in our pitch that we understand how this is going to work. And now we're going to add pieces to it. We're going to add structure to it. We're going to build a framework. So how do we do that? So we do that with what I call the concept sketch. And the concept sketch breaks up things into nice little chunks so we can individually take and understand what are the, the questions that podcast is going to ask us that we need to come up with so that we understand how the show works. Now, we already have topic and category. We kind of already exist in that. We already know what we're talking about. We already know what category kind of sits in. Okay, so now we've kind of break it down into these other five pieces, which is perspective, your topic approach. You've kind of already done that. You kind of already applied your topic. So you're bringing that over to the next form. So you, un you make sure you keep in sync with what your actual topic approach is. And then you're going to talk about your voice, your content, your mechanics, and what is your thing? I call it your weird thing, but what is your thing? This is your style. And the style is an important piece of this as well. We get into that. So time for another example about how this works, right? And we're going to go piece by piece so that you kind of understand how this goes. So let's talk about topic. And we go back to our true crime. And we're going to talk about what's the topic? Well, there's a high profile murder case from years ago where many people say the police arrested the wrong man. Did they? What a fantastic thing to start with is already I have a way to propel myself forward is I, my purpose for this is I'm going to, I want to answer the question, did they arrest the wrong man? And if they did, well, the podcast is going to be a big hit because we're going to find out that they arrested the wrong man and there's someone else who did it. And that just opens it up to far more scrutiny and people will get interested in that kind of thing, right? They want to know the, the twist at the end. Okay. So we exist in that, that perspectives or we talk about, that's our topic, right? So we're going to perspective and perspective is, well, how are we going to do this? We're going to connect the dots. That's what we're going to do. This is a suspicious arrest and there was a trial and maybe they missed something. So really our perspective is we think he could be innocent. Pretty simple. Your perspective could be a, a lot of different places is you think that this type of product is better than that type of product, or you think that, this approach to building a business is better than that approach. This is goes back to your starting a fight or knowing your points of view. So with a true crime, we're saying, we think he's innocent. Okay, that's our perspective. And we come, we approach the content from the innocence until proven guilty point of view. Some people do it. Oh, he totally did it. And we're going to prove that he did. That could be a different perspective. So think about those kind of combinations that you could use as a perspective and write that in your box. And then we got to think about talent. Talent is probably both the easiest and hardest. <laughs> and I say that because is it just you or is it more than just you? Because if it's more than just you, then it's complex. So let's think about talent. For this, for this example, I have a narrator reveals the parts of the story that happened, like the documentary. And then because it's such an old case, you don't have tapes. You don't have any of that stuff. It's probably going to be a really big pain, and, and it turned out to be a really big pain, to find the case or reports and information about this. So you're gonna have to read police reports and court testimonies and things like that. You may have to use voice actors to pretend to be real people. And you're gonna do exactly what like History Channel does or ID does or any of those court dramas and stuff do is you're gonna create the docudrama. This is where it's true, but it's written, is read by an actor pretending to be that person. Yeah, because that, that, so that, that opens your talent up. It's not just you anymore. Now it's you plus a whole bunch of voice actors. So that could be an interesting twist. But who is the talent? Is it you and a co-host? Is it you and three other people? Is it a panel? Is it a guest every time? Is it you and a guest every single time? This is where you can really kind of break down the format because you're going to have to figure out who is talking. It's an audio medium where people are talking who is talking, okay? And then we're going to go into delivery mechanics. And delivery mechanics are really what they sound like, okay? How is it coming out? When are you going to put up, publish it? How often are you going to publish it? How many times are you going to publish it? So in our, in our example, we're going to be a seasonal podcast, which means we're going to do a bunch of shows and then go on a break. 
That's what a seasonal means. We're not going to be episodic. We're going to do, like, do one every week. We're going to do a bunch of shows and then go do some more research and come back with uh, season two. So we're going to do this every year. And we're going to release one hour episodes. Okay, there's a mechanic. Each week, there's a mechanic for 10 weeks. So for a 10-week block, I better launch an episode every week. And they better be around one hour because that's what I'm kind of saying here. I want an hour-long episode. I have a goal. I want to create hour-long episodes. That's goal one. I'm going to do it every week. Goal two. I'm going to do 10 of those. Goal three. So I need to break up my content so that I have these 10 weeks worth of shows. And I probably could do that with a, with a lot of these, with a lot of content, 10 week, 10 shows, piece of cake. On mountain bikes alone, I could do 10 shows. Simply on handlebars, brakes, gears, seats, geometry, uh, full suspension versus hardtail, types of terrain to ride on, tires, spokes, uh, sprockets. There you go. Helmets, riders, gear, the old clothing. That's that's ten weeks is piece of cake, and we we objected. We're, our objective is one hour, but we're also going to do some other stuff. We're going to do ten live shows. We're going to talk to people. We're going to do some interviews. Maybe the other ones are uh, docudramas, but ten live shows with like a real police officer, or maybe an FBI profiler, and then we do some Q and A because we have all those amateur sleuths out there who just we don't want to call in or want to talk to us or want to be interviewed about what they think something I missed or something they want to talk about or hey, did you know? That's 30 episodes per season. There's only 52 weeks in a year. If you can do this, you can create 30 episodes in one year. That's a lot of episodes. Already you're, you're on your way. Plus you built in a break with this kind of thinking. That's your delivery mechanic. That's how you approach a show. If you want to be episodic, you can either do an episode every week for a year. That's 52 shows. One of them is going to, two or three of them are going to be holiday shows. You already kind of know what you're going to kind of talk about theme-wise there. You're going to break these shows up into your different topics on your subject. And you're going to kind of live in those worlds where you're going to do some ideas of what each week will be about. That's really the delivery mechanic. And even, even the length of the episode can be variable. So think about those kind of things. Now we go to presentation. So we know our perspective and our topic and our presentation of talent. Now we're going to do a presentation is we're going to, how are we going to do this? What's our point of view as, as delivering this thing? So this is the example here. We hear the details of the crime illustrated by the narrator. So the presentation style is going to be the narrator is going to do most of the talking. And they're going to introduce facts and amplify it with historical details using real audio recordings if we have them or voice actors. So there's going to be some narration and then there's going to be like, you know, and uh, the, the, the police report said, and then a voice actor's voice would come on. And it's like, you know, I was there. It was a dark and stormy night. And then he had a gun. And I don't know what happened. I ran. You know, and that was, that was their point of view. And this is what I think about that point of view. That's the presentation style. You could do it differently. It could be a panel show. You could be three different people talking about the crime and talk about and then do a voice actor or maybe even just read the thing live while you're with the three people. And what do you think about that? And de deconstruct it as you go. You could do it that way, too. There's a great show for uh, uh, Podcasters Roundtable where they talked about RSS feeds and they had all the panelists talk about the different pieces of RSS feeds and what they meant and what do you do with them and are they still relevant. That was a live, it was a, they, they recorded together, right? they recorded live and they deconstructed and when they got to a certain, to different types of parts of the RSS feed, you would think, well, obviously those are you know, set in stone, everyone agrees and they didn't and that became very interesting. So think about these kind of things where you can, you can break the presentation style up into co-hosts can definitely do this with people playing off each other. Maybe your co-host and you do not agree on a certain topic and you guys, is, you spend the podcast fighting about it is you take one position, they take the opposite position, you know, good cop, bad cop. This is the presentation style. And then finally you have the custom style and this is the, your weird. So the custom style for the example is, we're going to play off the audience fears. We're going to withhold information. We're going to know the answer to things, but we're not going to tell you what the answer is. We're going, to, we're going to milk it out for all it's worth. And we're going to keep that mystery going where we can really kind of amp the tension up to could be anybody. Because that's the, that's the genre of true crime or uh, nonfiction uh, audio dramas for, for crime is to amp that up. We don't want to say at the very beginning, you know, oh, well, we look, we look at all the evidence and yeah, he did it. All right. Oh, see you later. And that's boring. 
right? Instead, you're going to say, like, here's a crime. Who could have done it? And then here's, the police did this, and they couldn't find an answer. And then they did something else, and they were really stumped. And then this anonymous tip came in. It could be this guy, but then there's all the other things that could make him not this guy. It's completely milk this for all it's worth. And then do a live Q&A show or go to an expert and talk about the time period or something like that. There's all sorts of things you could do in your custom style where you could really do this with a, like an interview style. Interview styles rather than say like, hi, please tell me about yourself. That's boring. You know, I was like, oh, well, I went to Oxford and I did all this. No, you want to do custom style where you walk in, like my friend Tim Bryan walks in and just hits them with like a weird question. Like, so what do you like on your pizza? And they had a huge 10 minute conversation about, uh, in this particular case, he has Skype. And on Skype, he has Tim's name and Domino's Pizza at the time. And they talked about why you have Domino's Pizza on Skype. And it got into a huge conversation about the pizza and the pizza delivery. It's hilarious. He did that on a KDY podcast or KDYpodcasting.com where he, they, they, him and this artist talked about Domino's Pizza and the way in which he interviewed the person when he did this broke it up in a way that was interesting like no other one has ever done before. This is the kind of approach you want to take in a custom style. What is the way you do this that kind of makes you stand out in your own personal, in your own personal way? You know, start, you know, start in the middle a lot of times is a good way. Uh, I believe that J.J. Abrams calls it the mystery box, right? Say some things and like, like allude to something and then don't come back to it till the middle of the show. You know, we're going to talk about this really cool thing. This is the monster they found in, in Loch Ness. But first, we're going to get into uh, uh, the sightings on the shore. You know, it's kind of like, it's called the, uh, the hook. And we'll get into that. Okay. So extras five, what is your perspective? What is your talent? What is your deliver mechanics? And what is your style going to be? This is, can really be summed down into one sentence is what is your when, what, where, why, and how? This is how the foundation is built upon. This is the structure for the framework we build your podcast on. And these are the specifics, the nuanced specifics of podcasting that are required for you to figure out. That is the, that is the key there. Okay, that's extra five. And of course, the takeaway is, you can make as many as prototypes, as prototypes as you need. These are called prototypes for a reason. Because you're going to find the, what best structure works for you. You're going to really kind of design a show that's an interview show. Then design a show that's just you talking, the narrator show. And then design a show that's because you and a co-host. And then figure out which version of that show works best. And you may have to create a whole bunch of different prototypes and then weigh them together or ask for other people's opinions about how they think that topic should be presented. And figure out is seasonal show for you or is it episodic is it one week or every month is it, you drop them all at once or do you milk them out for for weeks on end every single saturday what are your you know the styles are different on each different one break that up talent wise presentation wise mechanics wise and figure out what the style of the show it is that's why they're prototypes as a designer for presently a podcast designer you want to create two or three of these and kind of figure out what is the one you want to work with because you may not have the resources to do one of them. You may have to abandon one because you can't do it because it requires a co-host and you don't have one or it requires you to have multiple microphones and you don't have those or it requires you to do sound effects and studio and actors and you don't have the money to pay for all that. You may have to figure out different resources like an audio drama. A lot of times uh, we, we have one actor do multiple voices or we find special effects by going around the house and knocking things over and recording that stuff. Or like, I think I did a shopping cart where I pulled a shopping cart through a parking lot. Really, I mean, really easy stuff. But you become, a, uh, you become focused on the resources it'll take to actually produce this thing by understanding what pieces actually are required. So if you want to do a co-hosted show and it's just you, you now have a design problem. You need to find a co-host. And you need to also find a co-host that agrees with all the kind of work you've done so far. Otherwise, you need to change your design. Or you need to modify your design so that that co-host then can fit into that and also agree with your why and your presentation style and your point of view. That is the key takeaway from this. That's how you build prototypes. All right. So are we doing on time? Okay. Got about 15 minutes left. Perfect. <laughs> Okay, so the principle of interaction. This is principle four. And interaction really is, is you've kind of, you built the foundation and you have a structure and now we're gonna start adding skin to the muscle. So we built the bones, we got the muscle and now we're putting some skin on the muscle. This is the pieces that are really about communicating. 
And when I say communicating, a lot of times the word you really want to use is called a script. And I'm not talking like a transcript. You write every single word you're going to say. I'm talking about the scripted pieces that you're going to have that kind of orchestrate the show going on. Maybe orchestration is a word I should use in here for future use. But you want to communicate with people. And they're going to, what, what script is your podcast going to use? Because every podcast is different. They all start their shows different. They all end their shows different. They all use music in different ways. They use stingers and bumpers in different ways. They have ads in different places. They're, they're host read or they're, they're, uh, they're pre-generated by the company that wants to, is the sponsor. All sorts of ways of, of building your show of constructing your show because it's a time medium, right? There's a play that starts at zero and there's an end when it ends and when the show's over. What is the pieces that fit inside that timeline? So I broke this down into five pieces and this is the podcast script canvas. This is also in your, uh, in your bonus. Hold on a second. Let me take a drink here. And it's broken down to intro, outro, hook, style, and sounds. And you're going to, to take this apart in this way is a hook captures attention. This is the part where you're going to grab the audience or grab the, the listener and it has to happen usually within the first minute. A lot of people, maybe they'll hang on for five minutes, but you really need to capture the attention right at the very beginning. You're going to have an intro. The way you're going to start the show is going to be the way you're going to start the show until you decide to change it. And then the outro the same way, where you're going to end your show until you decide to change it. And then you have music and sound, and you have the style help you stand out. So let's start with hook. All right. Here we go. Another example, right? We love examples. So what's the hook? Hi, I am blank, and you're listening to the podcast at blanks. Now, how do you fill that in, right? Hi, I am Kyle Bondo, and you're listening to the podcast that focuses on people who didn't do it. Ooh. Or, hi, I'm Kyle Bondo, and you're listening to the podcast that uh, solves mysteries. Ooh, that's kind of a hook. That's really what a hook is, is you're kind of taking your pitch and you're refocusing it to kind of capture someone's attention. And we're going to build that into our intro. So the hook kind of helps capture the attention is what is it? What is the interesting thing about your show? What's the thing about that show or that topic that is super interesting that you want to hook people into? And maybe it's, maybe it's meta. Maybe it's something really big is we dig into people like no other people, you know, like no one else does. Well, how do you do that? And I know some people do like the business ones. Well, like I wanted to find out how millionaires made their money. That's an excellent hook. You're going to go do interviews. You're going to go, obviously, that uh, seriously narrows your topic list right, right off the bat is, well, first off, they have to be millionaires, okay? And they want to know how they made their money. So there's now a, an approach in which what you can ask a presentation style is what kind of questions you're going to ask. So that's the idea. You know, hi, I'm Kyle Bondo, and we talked to millionaires to find out how they made their money. <gasps> Ooh, okay. So let's build that into our intro. And the intro is, is a welcome to, and we'll do the, the our true crime right there to kind of help us fill in the blanks here. So welcome to Dark Roast, right? <laughs> Domain name, which, which will cost hundreds of thousands of dollars to purchase, by the way, so if, you, if you were curious. Darkroast.com. Yeah, definitely not something you're going to get with a, with a 12 bucks. Okay. So really, we haven't named the show yet, which is fine. That comes later. We're going to do all this work before we ever name the show. We just want to make that point. But for the sake of this argument, we're going to use our, our true crime. Welcome to Dark Roast. We are a podcast focused on solving unsolved mysteries. I'm your host, Kyle Bondo, and today we'll be talking about the gruesome triple homicide in Georgetown. And you're not going to believe who did it. Boom. That is a hook built into an intro. If I heard that within the first 20 seconds of listening to a podcast, I'm going to lean in and be like, what triple hom What? Who did it? Or maybe I could even do it more. You won't believe who didn't do it. So you could build this any way you want. And the idea is to welcome to where are, what am I listening to? What do you do? This is your, your, from your, from your direction and from your pitch. What is the show po focused on? Who is talking? To introduce yourself. Today, we are talking about topic that you're actually going to be talking about for today. So I find out if I'm in or out right from the very beginning, and you're not going to believe something that I will have to wait probably 30 or 45 minutes into the show to find out. 
that is how an intro works. It's not, hey, what do you want to talk about? I don't know. What do you want to talk about? I don't know. What do you want to talk about? Do you want to cut all that stuff out? You want to be concise. And this can be, you can work intros a whole lot of different ways, but this is definitely how this is done. And you can flip this. I love to use the audio drama version of this, which if you ever watch a TV show and you ever watch CSI, CSI is a show where uh, it's a, they're from Las Vegas and they go and they're the team that does the forensics for a crime. And Grissom, who's one of the main characters, he's always got a, a catchphrase, he'll say at the very end. And they'll do something, well, they'll, they'll find the crime and they'll do something and he'll say something like, you know, well, I guess he didn't make it to the show. Something like campy or dad joke kind of thing. But it's like two minutes, you introduce this, you know, some mystery and then they show up and they're like, hmm, we don't know how the heck this guy, you know, died. And there's a, you know, the mystery deepens. And then the music starts and you actually play the music and start the show. A lot of podcasts use that model. Why? Because it works. That's why. And a lot of times, if it works, use it, steal it. Great artists, was it good artists borrow, great artists steal. This is how you get past the, some of the things you worry about when it comes to podcasting. But have this known in advance that you're going to do that. Okay. Don't make it up, you know, 10 shows in and flip it on people. That will, people will be like, am I listening to the same show? Focus on this, doing this beforehand. And the outro is kind of the same way is thank you for listening to Dark Roast. You can find our show notes at darkroast.com. Tell us what you think at darkroast.gmail.com. In our next episode, we'll be talking to Police Commissioner Bob, who doesn't think the guy in prison did it. Until then, help, you know, keep solving mysteries or, you know, be careful what you drink or where you drink, you know, something like that. So you can, you can fill in this kind of same thing where you tell people what they were listening to and where to find you and how to communicate with you. This is the connection piece, the call to action piece, is not only do you tell them where to find you, but then you tell them kind of what's next. You tease out what's coming next. Because if you've done your planning, you already know what's coming next. You already know what the next episode's gonna be. So tease it. Give them a little taste of what you're gonna talk about next and make it, you can make it as, as you know, abstract as possible to where people are like, whoa, I better listen to the next one. Leave them wanting more. That is what outro is for. Now we're going to go to sounds. So sounds really kind of break it down into, are you going to have theme music or not? You need to answer this question. And what is that theme music going to be? And is it licensed? These are the kind of things you need to answer long before you ever start the production because you're going to have to go find out what this is because theme sets tone and tone and mood are important in a design. It's a mystery. I should have mysterious things. You have to do a cello music. Right? What if it's not a mystery? What is the comedy? Cello music just kills comedy. You can't really have laughter while someone's playing a cello that sounds like you're at a funeral. So theme music and mood is very important. And you also think about sounds in between. Are you going to have segue music? Are you going to have these little things called stingers and bumpers? Now, everyone knows, if you've probably heard these in radio, but didn't know what they were called. A stinger is like a dun-dun-dun, and then you move on to the next segment. That's it. Just a tiny little like, like two-second little thing sound bite. Where a bumper, a bumper is kind of like as the radio show is starting to roll into the commercial, they're like, coming up next, we're going to be talking about this, and like, da -da 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 -da. and we're going to be talking about that, and uh, stay tuned, and then they can roll into the commercial. That's a bumper. The kind, of, kind of the sounds in between the commercial. And then decide, if you will have ads, where do they sit? Where's the natural place for them to go? Because either three things will happen. One, there'll be a host read ad, and you'll have to put them somewhere you'll have a sponsor ad and you'll have to put them somewhere. And you're going to have, at some point, you're going to be on a host that's going to do dynamic insertion of ads. And you're going to want to know where those are going to go so that naturally the ad doesn't completely jar the audience or the listener completely out of their, their comfort zone or, or out of their headspace by an ad, you know. And then the man died. And now Casper mattresses. No, you don't want that kind of transition. So you need to know where those go. And this is where you're, you're orchestrating the placement of things in your, in your script design. And then finally, we have style. And style is your weird thing. And I like to call this the Paul Harvey principle. And the Paul Harvey principle goes like this. Every time he did a rest of the story show, he would say, and now you know the rest of the story. And when he did news and comment, he did a lot of things like page two. He would say things in ways that normally people don't say. He embellished certain words. He used catchphrases. And again, catchphrase, you might have heard that before, right? We just talked about that a few minutes ago. That's your pitch. This is your tagline, your catchphrase. There is a, 
a great guy in mountain biking world called uh, Brett Tippy, and he has a pod, he has a, a a show he used to call uh, Just the Tip, and uh, he's a crazy crazy kind of a weird guy, and this is the kind of thing that would, would you kind of shock your or you kind of get your people listening to your show to understand who they're listening to. It's almost like audio branding or sonic branding or or you kind of this uh, this audio logo in a sense. It's a thing you say every single show. Every single time, uh, Chris Hardwick does something called at the end of his show. He says, uh, "Enjoy your burrito," which is a bizarre way of saying what the heck does that mean? Well, it means enjoy life. You know, take some time and enjoy your food you're eating rather than worry about everything. That's what it means. It's very meta, and it comes from their show like a, you know, four years ago. But it's the inside joke now that the end of every show they say, "Enjoy your burrito." These are the kind of things that you need to have in your shows so that you are really kind of doing this fan service is if someone becomes a listener and listens to that show, they're really going to enjoy that. But what is it? What are you thinking about what it could be before you record? So think about those are. And the pitch a lot of times is an organic creation to this, to creating this kind of thing is the pitch as you say, you know, when you tell somebody is, is, Oh, what, what do you podcast about? Oh, I do the rest of the story. And you're like, what's that? Well, I tell a story and then I tell you at the very end who I'm talking about. I leave that out. That's kind of the, the way you kind of build a pitch into that. Now I take the, I do a podcast. You know, my podcast is about uh, telling stories where I tell the, the, who it is at the end, right? Mike Rowe does this too with, uh, that's the way I heard it. It's basically an homage to Paul Harvey's rest of the story, where at the very end, he tells you who, who is he talking about? And you go, oh, oh, Abraham Lincoln. Oh, I did not know that about him. That's, uh, oh, that's fantastic, right? That's the catch at the end, you know? And he says, you know, and well, anyway, that's the way I heard it. So that's his catchphrase. It's, uh, it's the rest of the story, homage. That's all it is. So think about those things in your show. What are they going to be? So exercise six is what is your hook? What is your intro and outro? Do, will you have music? Will you have ads? And make those decisions now and figure out where they go, orchestrate those places where they go and create these, these, these templates for when you insert content in there, you now know how that goes and what places go where and how you introduce that content and how you're going to actually break your show up so you know what happens at the very beginning. So if you handed this to somebody, a host who had no idea what the heck you were talking about, didn't know, I was like, you know, I just hired a host and here's the script. He looks at it and goes, oh, okay. Oh, I'm just with this name of the show and that's what I'm talking about and that's the topic for this show. Oh, perfect. Everything's right there. They don't have to do any of the hard work. You already did it for them. That's the point of podcast design. Okay, so takeaway five, know what you are going to say before you say it. This is the key thing about having these things is when you sit down at that microphone, like at the story I told at the very beginning, you sit down and you don't know what you're going to say. Already I have the first 20 seconds scripted out for me. And once you get rolling, a lot of times it's very easy to start building upon that because then I can go through the outline. I can talk about the topics. I know what my key points I want to make. And then I already know what I'm going to say when the show's over. I already know how to close the show. I don't have to make it up as I go. Okay. Principle five. Principle definition. This is the last definition, the last one. We're at, uh, okay, about a minute, an hour 20. Perfect. I said 90 minutes, so it's right on cue. Okay, so the principle of definition is the last principle. And what's that mean? Well, a podcast design is functionally functional. It meets a need and solves a problem. This is bringing everything together. This is the final piece. You kind of pull all your little thinking and thought processes and all the things you've written down and bring it into a final design that you would then give to a producer. If you were working at a, a publishing company or you would, uh, or a, a podcast company, or you will use to help inform your next step in the process, which is content creation and recording. This is the design piece you're going to use. And it looks like this. It's really just a, a simple design summary. We kind of all the decisions and all the work we've made, all the thoughts we've made, we kind of work it out. And if you think about it, we've done all this stuff. Really, description is our, our direction statement. The talent presentation, delivery, and style, that's everything we did in adaptation. We built our framework. Over here, our topic and niche, we already know what those are because we've already decided what those are. We know what perspective we have, our point of view. We already know what our pitch is. We already kind of know which direction that's going to go. And we already know who our target, who are we talking to? So really, the only thing we have left to do is kind of name this thing, add our script pieces to it, and start working on content. That is really all that's really left. And this is where I said at the beginning of the show, I was going to kind of get a little bit into this, is about naming your show. Now, here is the, the world according to Kyle, or I guess I could say the world according to Kyle and Tim, and technically the world according to Gagglepod, 
is a lot of people will give you a lot of advice on how to name it. And they'll say things like, put the keyword in your title, it has to be in there. And I say, that depends. And here's why. Right now, Apple is king for now. Their search is horrible, however. Now, I know they've been done some modifications to Apple Podcasts, but really you can only search by title and author. So a lot of the keyword search stuff for naming exists as a, a outshoot of if it's in the title or it's in the author, someone will find it. That's why you'll see a lot of podcasts about podcasting have the word podcast in it. That's just the way it works because if I'm searching for podcasts or podcasting, those are going to pop up. That's it for now. Google, however, is creating better context search and audio searching. That is coming. That is already coming. You would even say Amazon has been doing a lot of this too. But Google definitely has been doing this stuff. Spotify has been doing this stuff. And now even Pandora started doing the uh, podcast genome project where they started ripping apart podcasts and finding out their individual pieces. Context and marketing matters. So all the naming rules when it came to business naming now uh, starting to apply in podcasting where functional names like ABC legal doesn't work anymore in podcasting. You're going to have to come up with something more creative. You're going to have to do something more interesting, something to catch people's attention because soon you're going to be able to search on more than just title and author. You're going to be able to search on context. And when you can do that, Apple podcast title and author, where you named your podcast, the podcast for podcasting, isn't going to work anymore because you're going to be with 10,000 other podcasts, just the same name, and you're not going to jump out. You want to be different. Why are all the stale computer names out there, the whole list of them, IBM, Dell, NEC, all those different ones that came out in the 90s or the 80s, and suddenly here comes this one company called Apple. It's named after a fruit. Here's a computer company named after a fruit. It's totally stood out. They were the anti-corporate. They stood out against everything. They were, the, they were the, the disruptor of the market. Why did that name work? Well, because all the other ones were named these other things that were very similar to everybody else. Apple wanted to stand out. Same rule applies in podcasting. And once upon a time, Google was nobody. Google was Googleplex or oh, meant a really big number. Now you tell people as a verb, go Google that. So think about that. Now, again, world according to Gecklepon. Ah, excuse me. Your podcast needs a name. So remember way back when, when we talked about our space, I want you to go back to that, to that research and you reuse it by just using the names. Would you take all the names of all the companies or all the different podcast name titles out there and put them in a big list so that you know who they are and who the adjacent shows are, you know, kind of your top 20. Who do you think have really cool names in that space and kind of put that down all, but all the ones are live. And then what you're going to do is you're going to start creating some keywords based on all the research you've already done. Go through all your, your direction canvas, your topics, your purpose, all that kind of stuff, and write down all the keywords that resemble your show and kind of build out a list of that. And then you're going to play a game. And the game is called Word Association. You're going to go to the thesaurus and dictionary, and you're going to go to other dictionaries and weird dictionaries and maybe even the urban dictionary, but, you know, caution yourself with that one. And think about all the different things and connections and different ways of saying those words. And what you do on this big piece of paper of writing all this stuff down is you start to find interesting phases or phrases. You start to find interesting ways in which you can communicate what your podcast is about. And a lot of times I find that this happens naturally when you start doing content research. When you dig into your topics and do all your list of topics, things will pop out that we were we, weird phrases that people say that you never heard of before unless you're talking about that topic in particular and it'll start repeating itself over and over and over again and you'll see the pattern you'll go oh well naturally i should call my podcast that that's exactly what you should do this is kind of the the way in which uh, we, we 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 kind of jokingly named pause for dramatic effect because every time we talk about an auto drama we go and then we'll so we said this thing but we'll pause for dramatic effect because a lot of uh, actors inside the audio world have to be very dramatic Companies is a running joke. We name the show after it because we do a lot of pausing. So you can kind of find some interesting ways of doing that. So think about these kind of word associations and do this kind of, kind, of, kind of thought problem. Now, then I want you to apply, of course, some design thinking to it. Is you're going to do an evaluation. Now I call this the five senses plus ESP. And we're going to, it's like you're naming the happy dog. You want to name the, give that dog a good name. And you're going to do this with five key elements. You have sight, sound, taste, touch, smell, and insight. And you're going to take 
your top names that you like and you're gonna put them in a list and you're gonna take your competitors names and put them in a list too and then you're gonna do this to their names and your names too and figure out which ones rise to the top you're going to evaluate yourself so that when you see the names that 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 work well for your competitors that you're gonna to have to do better than that. You're gonna to have to think better than that. Think outside the box in that sense. I know that's a overused statement, but really you're gonna to have to, to, to understand that, uh, that there's gonna be a lot of competitor names that are just garbage. It just, no one knows what the heck their show's about, but you're gonna use something that has a little more depth to it. So you're gonna, first impressions, funny to say out loud, it's like we love the word gaggle pod because it's a flock of geese, right? So the sound, it's funny to say out loud. The taste, a certain style to it. it touch is life and meaning. It feels, it feels natural. It's not like deck or an NEC or 730i. It's, it's some feeling to it or smell. It just works like magic. There's all sorts of kind of different phrases that can work that just kind of roll off the tongue that people say all the time. And then there's like the depth of meaning. And the key thing about insight with a name is the depth of meaning can help you come up with show art because it will link to your show art, it will connect to your name, will connect to your subject, connect to your topic, connect to you. All works because none of this stuff sits outside of context. Your name never really exists outside of the context of it being a podcast about something. So think about that, right? And here's the key takeaway for this one is you have to, it has to be a name you have to live with, okay? You can change it. You can change it but you have to be something to live with. So do this work, one through 10, you know, total score of 60, who rises to the top, and then you go and share it with your friends and family and see if they like it. And a lot of times they won't agree with what you agree with. And that's the final test. Is your family laughs or goes, eh, I don't get it. You may want to rethink. Okay, but then of course the final test is you have to live with it. You have to be the one to go, I like that name. Because if you like it, it doesn't really matter what anyone thinks. Okay. But when we come to design, this is going to think this is the this is a design thinking process. Okay. Now, a quick word about show art. I'm going to be very very quick about this. It's really simple. It has a goal. The name has a look, has some minimal elements, and it must be seen on mobile. And sure, it'd be great if it stood out from other ones, but really, it has to have at least those three things. And here's the key thing: it should have relevant art, which pulls back to your topic. It should have a podcast name. And in this case, this is a horrible podcast name because is it five A's or four A's? I don't know. And but by the way, one of them, like a three, four A's is a Chinese hacker website. So, you know, definitely do not type that in. But I love this because the baby's going, ah, the podcast it sounds perfect. This is all your show heart should have on it. Put your website on there. No. Put your name on there. I would say no. If it's your first podcast, don't do it. Don't even name your show after yourself. Avoid that completely. Until you're somebody, making a show with your own name in it is tough because that's just extra work you're going to have to do marketing. I'm trying to simplify the first time through that. So again, this is controversial, Kyle's controversy, right? Because remember, down here in the corner is the actual size you're going to see on a phone, maybe even smaller. That's all you're going to get. So right now I see a red baby and a cat saying, ah, that's it. And I go, huh, and I'm curious and I click on it. And I subscribe and I listen to the first episode and I listen to the first five minutes episode where the hook is. And then I'm in. That's all show art is. That's the purpose of show art is to hook them to listen to subscribe. That's it. If you put all the content on there, it's not going to work. It's going to be it's going to be fuzzy first, way down and tiny, and it's not going to do what you want it to do, which is grab a listener, a potential subscriber. That's the key. So that's all about show art. Okay. So exercise seven. You already have a name. I know you do. You already have one picked out before you even started thinking about podcasting. You already know, I'm going to make a podcast. I'm going to call it movies that suck and some that don't. You already have a name picked out and then you started designing. So I'm saying that's okay. Put that aside, pick another one and make those two names fight it out. Do everything I just told you to do and then see if that name measures up to the other names you came by actually going through your competitors, actually going through existing podcasts, actually going through the name word association and weird phrases and topic choices and going through content. Because I guarantee you that the name you have picked out probably will not be the one you end up with. That's just a theory. I've done this many, 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 many times. And I know that every time I have an idea, I have a name, pops right into my head. Oh, it's gonna be called this. And then as you go through it, you're like, oh yeah, that name's not gonna work. Or even worse, someone already has it. 
you don't want to rename your show with something someone or it else has done. That's rough too. Okay. So you know, pick one, pick another one, make them fight it out. That's the key here. All right. And final takeaway for this is really simple. You have to live with the name you select. You have to, to know that, that you have to pick this name before you go and get the domain name, before you get the email address, before you get the Twitter handle, before you get everything. It has to be something you can live with so that you do not get stuck with something you hate. You can change it, but not without pain. And this is the problem a lot of people have when they get their show launched without doing any design work is they launch their show and then they get them halfway through. They're like, ah, eh, no one understands the name. I call it uh, FTB talk or I called it, uh, uh, you know, you know WKRP and no one understands what those call signs are. They all think I'm a radio station. What do I do to change it? How many episodes do you have? Oh, I have 40. Ooh, that's going to be tough. So fix this problem before you launch. Give it a good name by doing the work before you launch it. That way, your domain name, your Twitter handle, your Instagram, all your social stuff, all your email stuff, everything you have connected to your scripts, all that stuff remains the same as you launch the show. It may not stay that way. You may have to relaunch the show with a new name. And sometimes relaunching happens. People rebrand all the time. But at least for the first time you're doing a podcast, pick a name you can live with. Okay. All right. Bonus principle. These are really quick is the principle of uncertainty. And I just want to drop this in here. There's no such thing as a perfect podcast design. This should be pretty self-explanatory and your podcast design is never finished. Sorry. You're going to constantly be working. I just talked about the rebranding process where people want to change things later on. You're going to find that some things aren't going to work. You're going to find that you're going to have to, to, organically change with the show's growth. And as you learn this medium and as you move forward with understanding how the show works, the design will change and that's okay. It's a, it's a design model that's not set in stone. It's a recipe. And if you want to add a little paprika to your recipe, you can. You can experiment. You can make changes. Things will happen in your life that will change your show. Uh, talking with uh, uh, Super Joe Pardo the other day on an interview, uh, Tom, Tom, from the chat room asked a question like I had started the show with uh, one child and it was a show that had like the, the dad and dad and his son kind of thing. And now I have three kids. So what do I do? Do I just change the name or I just change the format? You can change the format as your life grows or things change or the topic will change. Go ahead and modify that stuff. It's never done. It's never perfect. You're always going to have a design where you can make it better. In fact, if you have a perfect show or a finished show, you have a dead show. You have something because life can only exist in two forms. You're either growing or dying. That's it. There is no, there's no status. There's no stasis for life. So you have to think about a show is either growing. So you're modifying or changing it or it's dying or you're giving up on it. You're letting it pod fade. So remiss remember that they, it's never done. You're constantly be working on this. Okay. Know this little fact. I got this from Screen Rants that in 2019, 65% of the new shows are getting canceled. Why? Because some of them just don't work and can't find an audience. Some of them uh, have problems with actors who can't show up to work. Some of them have, you know, drug problems or production problems, or they ran out of money or, or like Firefly. They had uh, Thursday night or Monday night football mess it up all the time where no one could watch it because it was delayed until 1, 1 a.m. So you have all these kind of different kind of problems that happen with shows. Your podcast is going to have the same problems. So just remember that sometimes shows will be, will change based upon what happens in your life, what happens in the topic's life, what happens in your design's life, okay? So sometimes a show must end. This is the pod fading. Pod fading is a journey, not a destination. All shows have to end, all of them. Every single podcast will end one day. There are some podcasts that have been going on for 600, 700 episodes, and one day they will end. One way or another, they will end. Either the person will decide not to do it anymore or someone will die, and then the show can't go on, right? Or it'll be handed down. Paul Harvey uh, did his radio show for like 50 years, but eventually in 2009, he passed away. So you have to remember all shows end and then new shows begin because sometimes a show has to end before your best one can begin. And that's really the takeaway here. And if you, you want to, if you want to learn more about that, just go to podfader.com. I think I, I, I podfaded the show podfader. Yes, it is very meta. Okay. Bonus principle number two principle of the audience. And this is the thing we leave at every meetup, we leave. This is our final principle, okay? And we're done. This is something that Tim and I do at every single meetup we do. This is something we like to show people because perspective matters. And I get this all the time. I only have 30 downloads. Should I stop my show? No one's listening. And I like to counter that with, 
30 people in a classroom is enough, is enough to teach a class. It's more than enough. But what the problem is, is no one can visualize when you're sitting and you're recording in your closet what 30 people looks like. So I like to leave people with this thought is from the front of the room, 30 people is a lot of people. And if these were all your best friends and your true fans and showed up every week to listen to your show, is podcasting worth it? This by far is worth it. Even if half these people showed up to some of my shows, it'd be totally worth it. And that's why I do this. I love this medium. I love talking to people who are really interested in doing this. And I really want people to be successful in producing their podcast. And they always get frustrated because the listeners don't show up. If 30 people show up, you're there. Just keep doing what you're doing. Keep growing. Keep producing. Keep generating your topic. It takes sometimes 18 to 36 months before you ever get any kind of good rise out of an audience. And you have to be constantly learning and achieving and growing and moving your show to different directories and forming people and marketing your show. It never ends, never ends, never ends. But 30 people is satisfying. 30 people is very satisfying. So just know this. This is something we always leave people. This is what the front room looks like, okay? 30 people is enough sometimes. All right, bonus content. Okay, I said that was final principle, but this is gratitude. This is me giving back to you, all right? So again, back to the bonus. I have the five things, and I included six extra bonuses. And what are those six extra bonuses? Well, in there, I also included the podcast design process. I included the design process so that you get an understanding of how all the pieces work when it comes to creating your, your, your show. What are the pieces, the, the big pieces? Now, we glance, this is an introductory course, so we get the, the pieces that really matter. But there are little tiny ones in the middle that also matter that you can help even build your show even better. A lot of it has to do with content and theming and planning and some of the scheduling and things like that. So the design process is definitely something that, that is included. Also included is the industry process. This is something that I don't think anyone's ever shared with anybody, is how the heck does podcasting work? Well, I created a, a process to try to explain that to people so they could understand how a podcast gets to a listener and all the pieces involved. In fact, it also explains where people have formed companies to benefit off of the need for, for this market. So that's process in there too. Take a look at that. It's really good. Additionally, I included the Fred Rogers style of publishing. This is from my co-founder, Tim Bryan, who did a presentation at MapCon on how Fred Rogers, you know, Mr. Rogers' neighborhood, approached topics and approached talking to the audience and talking to the listener. And these slides are critical when you, when you appreciate the principles involved in those and the techniques and the, the, even the tactics in there. If you apply those to your show, you're going to have interested listeners. People are going to be engaged when you listen to this. I also included, what's your weird thing? What's your weird thing was the presentation I also gave at MapCon. And this was talking about the Paul Harvey principle. And I have some examples in there of different podcasts you could listen to or different hosts you could listen to on why they put things into the show and why it matters. What is your weird thing? And it's a really a branding idea because if you're constantly, I remember, now I know the rest of the story more because of a, as a kid listening to Paul Harvey, I remember that to this day, you know, and I'm in my forties. So think about those kind of things. That's that presentation will get you there. And I also included a one I did at PodFest Multimedia Expo earlier this year. In fact, uh, they're coming around again in March, 2020. That's in Orlando, which is a fantastic conference to go to. I did something called the uh, Pika Kachu, or I, I keep calling it Pikachu. It's a forced presentation for five minutes and the slides auto increment every 15 seconds. That one was called Canceled Podcast, How Not to Name Your Show. Now, if you, if you really are in the, stuck in the naming thing, this is the one to look at. It's, a, it's another PDF. I put in maybe 20 different shows that are named horribly. And some of them will get right off the bat. You're like, oh, geez, that is the wrong thing. I definitely should not have named my show that. Some of them are a little bit subtle. Where you're like, I don't understand what that is. It's like, oh, okay, I get it. Yeah, right. The Mr. Pickle show. It's like, what is it about? I have no idea. It's the Mr. Pickle show. <laughs> no idea what it's about. That's the point. No one knows what it's about. So no one clicks on it. And you, you have to do extra marketing. And it's just more stress and trouble for you. This PDF uh, has all these different and uh, notes to say why they're bad. And it's perfect for naming. If you really have struggled with naming, this will definitely help you how not to name your show. So once you know what not to do, then you'll be okay. And finally, I included the, an article that I wrote last year called Transform Your Book into a Podcast. 
I had a bunch of people ask me, how do I turn a book into a podcast? So I wrote an article that kind of defines how, as a, as a podcast designer, how I would approach the topic. And it breaks a book down into 52 episodes for a year. And if you really want to if you really want to take a book and turn it into a podcast, you can definitely take this article and do that. You can reverse engineer this too. You can take 52 episodes, turn it into a book. That's an article I haven't written yet, but I certainly should. This, all this content right here, totally free. You go to this QR code, takes you right to Veterans Day 2019. It takes you to the redirect and you get all this down. I'll have this up till the end of the year. So by all means, you know, if you, if you don't get a chance to do it today, you can do it tomorrow. But, uh, and I'll send this out in the thank you email for, uh, for attending. And I have one other bonus. The other bonus is I've written a book called Podcast Worthy. It's currently with the editor. And I'm going to do a pre-sale that, uh, that will allow you to get 50% off the cover price. For attending this, this course, you get this book for half off. Piece of cake. If you go to Podcast Design Book, put your email in. I'll email you out the promo code when it comes out. You get first dibs and 50% off. I think that's pretty fair. And it gives you everything we kind of talk about in this course, plus some, plus like all the, like the 20 some odd worksheets for the workbook. It has all the detailed process how to do this. It goes into more extensive on naming and it definitely talks about content and theming and building, building actually your, your episodes as you move forward. Now that is, so if you go to that QR code, put your email in, I'll send you the email out when the book is available sometime in spring 2020 might be in as late as summer because, you know, editorial processes are a, a giant a fun thing to experience. But uh, I wanted to, to give you the opportunity to, to have that at 50% off. And only the people who took this course get that. So I think that's, a, that's pretty cool. So I would love for you to, to, to benefit from this. So here is that. And if you want that, just get the QR code here. Okay. Finally, thank you so much for listening to this. So listen to my presentation. We've been going for what, almost a little over an hour and a half, which is kind of nice. And again, you can reach me at gagglepod at gmail.com or go find us at gagglepod.com or uh, always on Instagram. You can DM me at gagglepod. And it, with me also comes some Tim too. So you can go and, and find us both. And if you have any questions, if you any of these things made you uh, really confused, if you really want to, to, you know, it's like, you know, could you, could you tell me a little more about X? Yeah, by all means, send me an email. We, we love talking to people who are designing podcasts and we love talking to people who are interested in this topic. So, you know, here I, here I am again. Yeah. So that is pretty much uh, all I had for today. And so yeah, answering any, any questions I have in the chat room. And of course, one of the questions is, is when it comes to design, how do you know when you're, how do you know when the actual design process is, is completed? And I like to look at it this way. It's an 80, 20 rule. And the 80, 20 rule goes like this is if you have 80% of the design done, you pretty much have enough to get started. You could go through kind of some of these th thoughts, but if you could answer the last, the design summary, if you can answer that all in one shot, then do so go to the, to that and do that all in one shot. If you kind of have an idea that you've been noodling on for a while and you've thought about some of these processes, go to the last, uh, the last one and fill it out and use that as your precursor to start doing the, the recording process of learning how to use the microphone and publishing, which are, you know, two very different approaches once you build the show. Uh, another question is if you, uh, if you name a show and you change it, if you want to change it later on in life, how much pain is pain? <laughs> so that's, a, that's an excellent question. How much, how much pain is pain? I often recommend to, to clients is that if you name your show and you get halfway through production and you absolutely dislike it, dislike it or things have changed or you need to change your show's topic or even it's, it's named to something else, a lot of times the first answer is launch a new show. Sometimes that's the answer. People want to hold on to all that old content, the archives, the, you know, the subscriptions for that. Sometimes it's just easier to start over, to just relaunch it fresh. Now, with one of our clients, they had a lot of content from interviews that they wanted to repurpose. So migrating over wasn't, a, wasn't an option because they had used copyrighted uh, music in their show. They wanted to definitely get away from that. So the cease and desist definitely did not help. So they had to pull all the music out of that show, but they wanted to save the interviews. How to, what was the best approach? And they couldn't obviously migrate it over to a new host. 
I think they were on SoundCloud and they wanted to go to Ellipson or something. They couldn't migrate to a new host because a new host would definitely, definitely be like, no, 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 no copyrighted music unless you have a, a trademark or a copyright re uh, release. So what's the plan? Well, the plan was they had a bunch of backlog interviews they hadn't produced yet. So that's easy. That becomes the new show. You just go, go through the backlog. So every Tuesday we go through the backlog and we have an interview that went on tap. We pull that out. We put the show together, throw it out there. Every Thursday became the best of day where we take a show out of the archive and we tack on the, you're listening to the best of this show. And now you have repurposed content for new audience. And then on Saturdays became the show that was the cutting edge, the latest episode that had to come out. So we're able to burn through the backlog, repurpose the archive, and have new shows. That's really the approach. So migrating everything over from other the name change, you get rid of all that cruft and all that tech debt by just starting over. And yes, sometimes you lose an audience. So there's a couple strategies where you tell the old audience, hey, we've moved, come over to us. So when they find that podcast, they go, oh, they've moved and they move over or they don't. And you, you will lose a portion of your audience. It, it's going to happen. But if the show is good and it's growing, you know, you'll gain the, the loyal listeners anyway. A lot of people subscribe to the show, never listen to it. I have shows that I have subscribed to that I listen to two or three episodes. I like the show, but never get a chance to listen to it. It's on my feed, and I imagine if I'm sitting on airplanes one day, I'll be like, well, I haven't listened to this in a while. I'll listen to this one. But there are plenty of, uh, of subscribers that, that are just hanging on that aren't real subscribers. And you'll see that in your stats. You'll see that, uh, that you have these like weird ebb and flows of people of come and go is you'll get uh, new people showing up, and then you'll get like these drop-offs where no one's listening. And that's where this kind of weird place where subscribers come and go. Some people love your show and some people leave the show. So rebranding and launching as a whole new platform with fresh, fresh name and fresh show art and fresh ideas usually is the best solution. Now, can you migrate? Sure. You can migrate a show over to another host or something like that, change the name, but it gets really squirrely. And sometimes it's just better to do a clean cut and start over. All right. Uh, another question. Uh, I trouble finding my topic. So I don't know what to, what to, what to pick because I want to do too many things. So the, I go back to the, the, the very first sheet, which was the idea board. And again, it goes back to measuring your purpose, motivation, and your value is find the score that works for you because the score that works for you, you'll, you'll a couple topics will rise at the top and you're going to have to do the difficult choice of setting a priority. Which one do you want more? And I like to use the, I call this the, uh, the wife test, but it could be anybody who's close to you and your family is you go and say, what do I talk about all the time? And they will tell you, <laughs> they will go, oh my gosh, I really wish you would stop talking about mountain bike racing. It's just nonstop. You need to pick a new topic. You just don't stop talking about it. And that should key you in on maybe that's the topic to talk about. It's the one that everyone else knows you for. Oh yeah. You want to know about, oh, you need to go talk to Kyle. He knows about mountain biking. That's the thing. You need to talk to him. That's the kind of thing you think about. That will help you set your priority. Does it have to be your only show? No. I mean, you could actually produce a show and do a design and do a recording and learn the process and create that show and enjoy that show. And then do another one. No one said you only can do one. These are like M&Ms. You know, I do five, but I was doing, at one time I was doing five. So you have to know your limitations. And at some point, I mean, there are people who just want to do recording the voice. So they, off, they offload all that to, to production companies, to, to people like me and uh, to Matt Passy and uh, Emily uh, Prokop, who are, who, are look, who are people who edit those shows and they do nothing but audio engineering. So you record your voice and send it to them and they put everything together and they publish your show. That is another option for podcasters. You don't have to learn how to do any of the mechanics of it. You still need to design because the design piece of it is something you cannot avoid as the host or as the creator. You have to know what your show is about. You have to have your why, your purpose. All that stuff has to be you. You can't outsource that. You can get help. You can get consulting. You can get people to walk you through the process or help you come up with the aha moments. You can't outsource it. Sorry, you cannot outsource podcast design. I can outsource hosting or like a pretty talent. I can outsource talent. I can create a podcast and then hire a talent to do the podcast that I want done. 
I can do that because as long as I, I interview the people, I know that they match what I want done in this show and I can hire people to do that. But is it, is it quite the same with audio drama? Yeah. Because they're actors and they're paid professionals. If you get a host, sometimes a host is going to be a paid professional. You may have to put some skin in the game in order to get a host to come in to do a show that you do not want to do yourself. But a lot of us out here, we love to talk. We love the podcast. So we want to be in it. You can't outsource design. You have to think of yourself and you have to have some, at some point pick something. You know, if you, if you really, really, really are struggling, put all three names in a hat and pick out of the hat. And that's the show you do for the next year. Dedicate a year. That's a goal. Dedicate a year, 52 episodes. Do it for one year. If you don't like it after one year, do something else. Pick a new topic. Because I guarantee you, after a year's worth of podcasting, you're going to figure out what you like. And I did too. I went through all my, you know, I did 50 episodes of Merchants of Dirt. And I found out, I was like, okay, I think that's all I have to say about that. And I stopped, I did 50, episode 50 is like two hours long. It was all 50 episodes kind of summarized into one big roadmap. That's it. In fact, if you do Merchants of Dirt, you listen to episode 50, you could pretty much know which episodes you need to listen to after listening to episode 50. It's kind, of a, it's kind of a guide for you in a sense. And then I stopped podcasting. I pod faded that show. It still exists, but I just stopped doing it because I wanted to do something else. And that's the beauty of, of podcast design is you can do anything you want. Just you have to do, you have to pick something and move forward. And that's how you get past that block to move on to building your foundation and creating your structure and actually producing the podcast is pick something. And like I said in the presentation, pick something that you're good at and that you're passionate about as your first podcast. Because once you, you have to go through a lot of pain and learning, like learning curve sometimes can be steep. So you want to go through all that kind of process first with this podcast, the one you love, because you'll stick to the one you love. You'll, you'll put the energy into the, with the topic you love. And once you build that out, you'll have a better show and a better understanding of how podcasting works. That if after 52 episodes or 50 episodes, you don't want to do it anymore, you now have a whole lot of knowledge and what you like that it's changed over a year because we all change over a year that you can then bring together to show number two. And that's where a lot of times you'll, if you talk to some of the, the bigger podcasters, you'll find out that this, the show that they're most known for is not their first show. It's their second or third or fifth, or in some cases, their 30th show where they've done all this experimentation and now they have done a show that is what they wanted to do from the very beginning. With me, it's audio dramas. I want to do audio dramas out of the gate. Couldn't do it because I didn't have any clue how the hell they worked. So I went and did other podcasts based upon other interests I had. And now I've reached the point where I'm starting to tip my toe into the audio drama world. And I hope to improve that through, through a lot of the things that we're doing. But again, I'm now at the middle of the learning curve because audio drama is a completely different animal to, to a regular podcast or interview podcast or co-hosted podcast or even panel podcast. So different dynamics and different things going on. Anyway, so that's it for today. Thank you so much. We're about to reach the, uh, the two-hour mark. And I want to thank you for, uh, for coming and uh, 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 attending this. Again, I'll have the bonuses up for the uh, the end of the year and I'll put out a thank you email for uh, for you that you can get all those so you don't have to worry about remembering them or anything if you didn't get the link no problem I'll send those out anyway and if you sign up uh, for uh, the pre-sale for the book I'll have that open until uh, probably the end of the year as well so everything will be open until December 31st and you can take advantage of that and uh, if you if you have a friend who needs this if you have a friend who wants this book or a friend who needs to see this this presentation share it. I think I'm going to put out the video link there. Share the link. You know, people are like, no, don't share the link. No, share this, share this with somebody who, who needs this, who needs to see this because you know, somebody, you know, a friend of yours or a colleague or somebody who's been talking about doing a podcast forever, who just wants, who doesn't know what to do or has been sitting on the fence, share this with them, share the video, share the links, and hopefully it will change their life. Because podcasting changed my life. 
I finally found something that uh, I, I think I enjoy probably more than mountain biking. Just a little bit, just a little bit. I mean, mountain biking is just, I mean, they're, they're like this and like this. So, but I want you to be successful in podcasting. I want you to have a podcast that works and functions and is flourishing two, three, four years from now. And that was the whole point of this presentation. And I want to say thank you to, uh, to Dan, Dan Morris from the Podcasters Kit for having me as part of their, uh, of their kit. And I really appreciate you coming. And uh, I hope to uh, hear about your podcast. And by all means, please send me an email, g g g uh, gagglepod at gmail.com. And let me know, what'd you build? What did you create? I want to know. So I can be a subscriber and listen to what you created because finding out that you use what I told you or what I taught you to create a podcast, man, that just, that means the world to me. So I appreciate you being here and I wish you the best in your podcast design journey. Take care.